In this exercise, we will introduce newcomers to the JavaScript date object and cover some of the more important time date information that we can extract from that object. I'm going to pair this short video with any clock or calendar application development tutorials that I create in the future to help cut down on redundancy in my videos. The video directly following this one will be showing how to build a specific application that deals with the date object, which one of you requested. So let's look at how we can extract things we want from the date object real quick. In our example HTML file, you can see that we have a simple script that's set to make a function named update run every one second. And we're using the set interval method to do that. And we're sticking it inside of the load event listener for the window. So when the document's ready, that set interval starts firing off. And this div with an ID of output is just here so we can place things into it that we want to visually inspect. So inside of our update function, the first thing we'll do is type var d. And we're going to make that equal to new date object. And we'll put the first piece of information inside of our output div. So we can type in output dot inner HTML is equal to, and we'll put our content between single quotes. And what I want to do is list the full year. So I'll put year hyphen. Then I'm going to also type in a break tag because I want there to be line breaks in between each piece of information that I want. So in order to concatenate the information I want within that string, I'm going to put two more single quotes and then two plus signs inside of those. And then I can put the dynamic data that I want there. So I'll put d dot get full year method. So I'm accessing the get full year method of the date object instance. And when we save and run that file in our favorite browser, we get year 2019. Now we can go ahead and copy this line and go down one line within our function. And this time we're going to put a plus sign in front of the equal sign. And what that's going to do is concatenate more string data into this first string output. And instead of year, we're going to type month here and change get full year method to get month method. Now if we refresh our browser, we get month two and year 2019. And the reason why we get month two, and even though we're in the month of March right now, is because January is represented as a zero, February is represented as a one, and March is represented as a two. So basically you get a number back that represents which month we're in, and you can do a little bit of programming work to make the actual month of March display there instead of a two. And I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. Now we're going to access a few more methods of the date object and list those within our output. So let's refresh our page. And now we have the year, the month, the date in the month, the day of the week, hours, minutes, and seconds. And it's running off of your local time, which you can also set it to universal time or any time zone that you want. Now day of the week displays as a one because that's similar to the way the month displays. It just displays as a number. But zero corresponds to Sunday. One corresponds to Monday, which is today. Now we're going to go in above and outside of our update function and pop in a variable named days. And that's equal to an array of labels. Labels that we want to represent the day and for display purposes. Instead of displaying a one to the user, we want to display Monday. Now that we know that the day of the week variable is the get day method is giving us a number, what we can do is put days, which is our array, and then in between brackets, we put that value, that number one that's coming in that represents Monday, or if it happens to be Sunday, it'll be a zero, but you can extract that out of the days array and it will display as Monday or MON instead of the number one. So let's refresh our page and see if that works. Yep, so day of the week is now Monday instead of just a number one. And you can do the same exact thing to the months. You would just 
put an array up here that says var months is equal to all the labels that you want for January through December. And then you can extract it the same way using the value that you get from the get month method. And it might be easier to create little variables for all these little pieces of data that you get from all of these methods. And it might be simpler for you to pop those in there instead of uh, using the whole method within the brackets. You can just put a little variable name. And here's a list of all of the date objects methods that we can tap into. And you can research these online on your own in your own time and experiment with all of them. But these that we're extracting here are probably the most common uh, methods used when people deal with date time programming for calendar, clock applications, and things like that. You can set your date objects for a specific date and time. You can offset time zones. You can set it to specific time zones that are not yours. And by default like this, we're just getting local time back local date and local time information. All right, I just wanted to present this video real quick because in future calendar or clock application development tutorials that I create, these are gonna be the methods that I tap into more commonly. And this is the way here that we're going to be labeling things, uh, providing labels to things instead of getting just numbers displayed on the screen. We can actually display the month and the day of the week and things like that. My name is Adam Corey and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you again in the next video where we're going to apply some of this stuff to create an actual application.